in my opinion, um, the uh, election snafu, the primary, was inexcusable. Uh, Precinct 4 was disenfranchised. Woke up on Friday, had to chainsaw our way out of our driveway, and um, looked around town and down in Lower Puna, called um, the elections division talked with Pat Nakamoto and I said are you folks really gonna have an election tomorrow and she said as far as she knew yes the next day uh, we still didn't have power at our home in Hawaiian Acres if you look at the figures for Council District 5 alone, um, I can share them with you in detail, maybe if you ask me questions later, but generally speaking, we saw an increased voter registration all across the board in every precinct um, by at least 100 people, sometimes 250 people, and then we saw an, a decrease in the voter turnout all across the board on, on primary election day in, um, at K Yao High School, it was 413 less people. And I can detail that for you if you'd like to question me later. Um, but I'm sure the figures are a lot worse in District 4. I went to bat after what happened on August 9th as well as August 15th. August 15th was a travesty. We have two entities that are helping out District 3, 4, and 5 of disenfranchised, denied voters. I myself was there with... Um, so many people that were turned away, literally turned away and not given a paper ballot, not given a provisional ballot, which is in state election law. They could have done. They did not. Everything was electronically done. But to be turned away from a legal, ethical, civil, and federal right to vote is a travesty. I was a, a poll watcher <coughs> on both August. August 9th and August 15th. Uh, the instant I got to the poll, I complained to the precinct chair that the election was being held while people couldn't get there. I just happened to be lucky enough to be in the top of Nanavali, so I was able to get there. But I couldn't even get word about if the election was going to be held the night before, except through a candidate. Uh, we had no word none whatsoever if the election was going on or not. Uh, I um, subsequently uh, observed the elections. I went down to the precincts that were shut down, both um, Paradise Park and Keone Poco, and it was very obvious why. The trees were down. I think the only reason that the polls were open in Pahoa was because Pahoa had electricity but none of the none of the people that live around Pahoa had any electricity and I went to the county elections office and the county clerk and formally complained about that following the August 9th election I did the same for the 15th and I was at all the polls and I saw all that happened I took dames down of people who were very upset extremely upset that they had not been allowed to vote we have um two entities that are helping us from the Federal Department of Justice. Eric Holder's staff called me a couple months ago and we went to work to get these people's voices heard. We have a thousand plus testimonies, emails, letters, phone calls turned into letters from two individuals. Now there's an attorney working with and for us from the Department of Justice. You can't say we're going to wait until the, vol the flow covers Highway 130 and then we'll do something about it. Well, what are you going to do about it? If they evacuate, and some of them have, um, will it affect their official address? If the post office is um, covered by lava and unable to deliver the yellow cards, how does that work? A lot of people are very concerned. We've already had one screw up in the primary. We don't want another screw up. We pay good tax money for good services. Please help us, all of you folks, to facilitate and think ahead.